We're watching out for us. It's not moving the entire time. Yeah. So that that amount of thickness, it, thickening, varies. So you can see you got periods where there's been movement, and periods where there hadn't been. But, but, but in respect to the upthrown side, it's always it tends to be thicker. So if you own a house like this and you've got the money to spend, you can continue to live in it. But it's not a comfortable house to live in when the floors are not at the same level downstairs. Yeah. Right. Are you lucky enough to get a pretty good deal on a house like that? Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah, otherwise maybe eight ten thousand would have been playing. So you pay for it. Yeah. So Dr. Norman, are you gonna uh, visit with these people if they come over and want an explanation? Uh, why we're staring at their house? No. But uh, there there was a lady from Columbia that owned this house for several years, ten, twelve. I remember years. she invited us in her house yeah. to look at it. Yeah, she invited us in. Oh, was out. No, you move. we got too many people. No, that's okay. Come on, come on. They had she wanted us to see the concrete backyard. Concrete was like this, and they built the steps so you could step up. Yeah, you had to walk up steps from the bedroom and you know, up into the dining room. Okay. Well, to do that, again, because this is a steeply dipping fault, it's a steep scarp, and when he would drive into the garage, the front wheels are up here, and when those wheels started dropping down when he got in the garage, he, he high-centered, scraped the bottom of his car. In other words, his car is being missing, trying, trying to get into this. So what he did was to end at the end of the his uh, driver, just outside the garage, he put dirt where you see concrete and so forth, and bricks. <clears throat> and he built a little, uh, Wall. No. A carport. Oh, the carport. Oh, carport. Yeah. A carport. The carport. Uh, he built a carport, yeah. And so, uh, because he couldn't drive into his garage anymore, so he made that into a playroom for kids and stuff. And uh, now he's removed the carport, and you, you see, he probably got about three feet from the, the level of his driveway up to where those top top of the bricks are. One other thing too is that this is not the original owner, this is the road for the new owner. And the original owner, he had to re-level the house several times. But it was economical for him because he had a foundation repair business. So he could do it for himself. Yeah. Okay. So he, 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 he was sort of at the edge of the... Right at the edge. Uh, of the top right. Yeah. yeah. So the, this corner curled down, but it was easy to just jack that up and put it here. It was okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't a big repair. Pretty good. Not the one quarter. Yeah. Did I ever think that the pile of bricks was the top of the But you can see how the entire house rotated and yeah. snapped, diagonally. Did you point out the uh, manhole covers over here? Yeah. I did some on this end, you might want to tell oh, me about okay. it. 
uh, what I was referring to is down there, there's some manhole covers in the middle of these westbound lanes. The city put that in to uh, kind of monitor what's going on in that fault zone. We've got utility lines that are crossing the fault here, and uh, they'd like to have some uh, flexibility for to accommodate the movement that's taking place in the fault. Again, we have no way of doing that, of controlling movement on these faults. So the only thing you can do is if you're designing something, designed to accommodate. You can't stop it from happening. You're going to fall 10 miles long and it's dropping and happening for an inch a year. There's no way of you going to stop it. So, do you know what they did? It's not much like pushing and pulling going on. There isn't very high winds, but uh, it's not enough. It's not enough at least on but when you have a fault underneath the house, you're shifting the load of that roof towards the back of the corner of this, of this house. So if these members inside are the ones vertical are now tilted. tilted. And uh, so the, the house isn't built to withstand it, so the more tilting that goes on, the weaker it gets, the less support that roof is getting. And uh, finally, okay, thank you. See, I'm not sure. It's going to stick here. Uh, but uh, I, did, I did mention to my group at least that uh, the city of Houston keeps a, kind of keeps a watch on these things. And, uh, They'll go in and inspect, and if they decide that that house is a risk, unfit for human occupancy, they're going to order it torn down. And the owner is uh, the one who has to pay for the cost of doing it. So they'll tell the they'll tell the owner we'll give you 60 days to to tear this house down. It's not fit for human consumption. And uh, if you don't, then after the 60 days, we're going to come out and tear it down, and you send you the bill. So it's going to happen, and that's done in a number of places around. It's been done in a number of places around Houston. They have the right to do that. Uh, for some reason, this house survives. I don't. I don't know. Are there restrictions on? Like, can they have gas lines in there or anything? What's like that? that? Can they have natural gas lines put in there? Or? Uh, they, they probably, I don't know if they I do or not, but uh, that's also a problem because yeah. utility lines. Uh, the other thing is, uh, people that were living in houses like this for a few years, it's like living in, uh, what do they call those houses at the state fair? Gravity houses. You walk into this house and the floors are tilting, yeah. That's what it's like. And they're trying to you're trying to adjust your brain to this, you know. It drives you crazy. So the, you, they can only stand to be there so long. So most of them move out and rent it to somebody else they can rent it to for a low price. Until they can afford to, say, straighten it up. But, uh, but like I say, there, I have said, there are homes that are sitting around here in Houston I guess I'm sitting on faults that have been there for 50, 60 years. And uh, people keep paying the cost because they like the neighborhood and the neighbors and they don't want to move out. They just... Or, or it just dropped off. Yeah. But why? How do you know? <coughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, you do. There's your direction of movement. So you have these complexities of movement on, stri on these faults. So some type of engineered structure, a linear structure crossing the fault, 
It's just because not breaking it and pulling it apart. You've got to take in these extra components, directions of movement. And the engineers know to, need to know this information for their design work. So in this case, it goes from here to here. And that's the direction of the movement. And it's dip-slip. So as Carl said earlier, we have found no evidence of strike-slip components to these faults. Now, somebody may come along and think that this is strike-slip. Do we see the fault? It must be strike slip. But you got to remember, the fault is entirely independent of these roads. It was here tens of thousands of years before the roads were. And uh, the, this side to the southeast is pulling away. So like Richard pointed out with his toes here, this point here was with this one. So it's moved over here and down. It's not strike slip. It's due to the, it appears to be because of the angle the fault is making across the pavement. If the fault went across this way, you wouldn't have that offset, would you? Because your direction of movement then would be directly down here. Instead, it's this way. So it's picking up this horizontal component that makes it look like a strike slip fault. Yeah, that gap is your horizontal component. <laughs> Because <clears throat> that corner of the house had fallen off. So they cut the slab, notched it back, and built, rebuilt the house like that, and they saved the house. Now, it looks like they're still a little, they're in the deformation zone, so they're getting a little bit of movement, but they're not in a lot of movement. So they cut it back, it better. We don't understand why the south is still standing. I call this the teacup house because it's shaped like a teacup. They're, they're filling in cracks in their cross section of a teacup. Look at those window frames. Here's a fun exercise. Try to look up the value on all these houses with an HCAD. And you'll see they have value. They have value. Land value or building value too. Bricks are all 